We must sound like broken More records. By now. <laughs> it is difficult to get things in Mexico for your boat. Unless you're willing to pay exorbitant amount of money for it. And it takes a lot of time to get things shipped. Yes. We did discover that our neighbors found one hack for this, one solution for some boat parts. I thought it was interesting. I've never seen a 3D printer before and they've got one going on their vessel. And they're printing all kinds of little doodads for their boat. Nothing nothing too structurally strong. I mean, I'm not gonna make turnbuckles out of a 3D printer, I mean, not yet at least, but it's pretty interesting how many little knickknacks and doodads that you need on a boat. Even as simple things as, you know, little hooks to hang up your pots or, or washers or spacers or in our case pulleys come join us in this video <laughs> as we learn about how you can print things for your boat our boat neighbor Chris is an engineer turned sailor who crossed the Atlantic and used a system that he designed and printed a top-down furler with ball bearing hanks he uses software called Autodesk Fusion 360 to design everyday sailboat items from scratch while the learning curve can be quite steep for creating these kinds of designs, there are already many existing open source designs that can be found online and utilized by beginner 3D printing enthusiasts. Functional 3D printers can cost around $150 USD these days. With another $20 for printing material, you can start to materialize useful items for your boat seemingly out of thin air. While we're impressed by their nifty printing device, Rekka was intrigued by our self-sufficient solar cooker. So there is a parallel story in this video about how our neighbors prepared a sustainable lunchtime snack while we learned all about 3D printing. Good morning! Hi. Choco, get out of the way. So Let I'm her going, come up. I think we we'll just leave this to you. And, sure. Uh, these are the pans, and these are like little pieces to to keep the whatever you're cooking off of the bottom so they don't burn because you can actually burn stuff mm -hmm. in this oven. Just, I was just gonna ask you, do you want to put it like that? Yeah, we should. We just need to cook it and then I will peel it and I just smash the eggplant and it will be like a cream and we mix it with mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. We make like a homemade mayonnaise and that's it. Okay, and let's put like them in the oven. Pan. I will put this one. Yep. Like that. Yep. Put it in. I guess the best thing is uh, is to time it. I hopped onto their homemade solar-powered electric motor dinghy and arrived at their boat on which almost everything seems to be 3D printed. They also did the Dyneema standing rigging. They use synthetic rigging with printed rigging hardware. Yeah, and this one is printed. Oh, you printed that? Yeah. And it's a ball bearing with ball bearings. And then you just bought the ball, ball bearings or you printed those? Yeah, I have many of the ball bearings. So this is, we need to make some pulleys. And I mean, low friction rings is what we're looking for. Yeah. But you also print the exact thing. So I should tell Robbie, I'm filming so that he can see it. Right. <laughs> they use printed rod holders. You see the layer lines here? Yes. So it's very strong in this direction and this direction, but then along the layer lines, it tends to break. Yeah. It breaks more easily, like it's uh, half the strength along the layer lines. It's like wood. So yeah, like dry wood, right? Yeah. And then so what you can do is that along the layer lines, you add uh, stainless steel bolts. Yes, yeah, so it's and then bolted that's, together. That yeah, way. and then it's bolted together, so you're not asking the plastic to be strong to in the layer way. line. Um, direction. Printed autopilot using open plotter open source software. It's, it's, it's made it's of six, piece. six pieces. Okay. So from here to here to here to here to here, that's one piece, and I have six of them uh, screwed together. And then where I screw them together, that's where they where I fix them on the wheel as well. And even a printed roller furler. I never thought about stuff that's that's bigger than an inch, you know. And, yeah, and then yeah. You're showing people think that about like statues and stuff and figurines and. So these all these pieces have been. You can see all the components that you've printed out each individual, and you're saying that um, this, for example, is open source kind of designs that are that you found online. No, no. This is this is something I made. Oh, you there was no design this. for this. And some of the stuff that I use sometimes is stuff that is open source. So somebody else made it already before me. 
because every time you, you make something that's gonna fit to something then you have to try a couple of times right and and then you know if, if you can just like upload it to the internet and then give it a, a brief explanation then you save the time for others to go through the hassle of trying and failing and then a furler like this would be like two thousand dollars or yeah. a hundred five thousand dollars something like that yeah is that the aubergine yeah so christoph already cut some onion and it's mixed with the uh, soy sauce nice. and now i'm eating the eggplant and yeah and then you will see how we we just have to mix it with the mayonnaise i never made this before the aubergine we yeah it's very typical in eastern europe and, you know when i was a child we made it this a lot my grandmother and my family so that's why yeah, i wanted to so as Rekha prepared some Eastern European eggplant cuisine called Venete, with lovingly fermented sauerkraut on the side and homebrewed kombucha. So I added the onion and now I'm mixing it with the mayonnaise. And that's uh, a mayonnaise that you whipped up with the egg? Yeah. With the fresh egg? Yeah, two eggs and oil. Chris introduced me to the handy little machine and the process. It's smaller than I thought, the 3D, 3D printer. You can take this off here, yeah, because it's only magnetic. Take it off. Just the plastic? Yeah, it's just magnetic. Okay. And then if you bend it a little bit, this will come off. Ooh, it's kind of stuck, I don't want to break it. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. It's pretty strong? Yeah. There we go. So these are all parts of the same thing. And so this is going to be the like uh, re reservoir. Like this is where uh, I'm going to put okay. the concrete powder, like the sand and sand and, and concrete, right? And then this is going to come like here. All right, so this is all parts of the same thing. And I'm going to glue them together from small parts. This is the peristaltic pump. So there is this tube, right? And then you have these rollers inside. And when this is spinning, it's making the water go forward. And so it dispenses water at a very calculable rate, okay. a very precise manner, right? So this is going to dispense the water. And the other thing is, this one is going to dispense the concrete powder, like the premix. Ah, okay. And then it's going to be mixed together and then we'll try to print with concrete. So, and of course, you've made the whole thing out of uh, the printing. Yeah, well, printer. this is a NEMA 17 motor. This this came from this came ready already. Oh, okay, not this. But piece. everything that's plastic yeah. is 3D printed. Yeah, except okay. for the tube, right? I'm trying to understand just what is it like? What is you know the space? So it's kind of like this. It goes all the way up. This kind of oh, it goes all the way yeah. maybe up to here. Yeah. So this thing can actually move up yeah. to the top, yeah. to the bottom, yeah. and it can come. Okay, yeah, and then it would slide here. Like in, in theory, it can it can make something like this yeah. by this, exactly, and yeah. then by by Very that, much. taller, yeah. taller, or even taller. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, always the first layer is the one that's problematic. You know, if the first layer is alright, then generally the rest of the print is fine. You can just like yeah, just like that. Yeah, sorry, it's propped up because one of the fans is broken. So this is the part that goes into. Does it fit? It should it, be a very tight fit. Yes, it seems like it's. It fits. He had just printed out a part for a design that he's working on for future projects. So more about that project later. Our neighbors really wanted to help us out with our wind vanes somehow. So we decided to test out these printed blocks. The Prusa Slicer program allows the user to break a design down into its specific layers so that you can really see how the printer is going to handle laying down the material. The plastic used in this case is PLA, a monomer derived from organic material, such as corn, and compostable in an industrial setting. So it smells a bit like popcorn when it's printing, and it's much more environmentally friendly than typical plastic. The drawback, of course, is that the material can break down more easily over time, which is actually ideal for some temporary uses, perhaps for containers, packaging, or fishing lures, for example. 
The printer starts out using roughly 500 watts when melting the plastic, and then when it reaches the right temperature, energy usage goes down to around 150 watts. So Chris tells me that he often prints while only using solar power. Like this, and like this, and these two things go together. Another trusty material, this for the bearings inside the blocks. And this here, so they are... So they fit together better. Assembling the parts requires some precision and care. It's pretty hands-on, so you will know each individual part of your device very well. Okay, so, so I, I got them in now. Okay. You see them? Mm -hmm. And this is the first row. Yeah, and, row and I have two layers of, of bearings so okay. that they take more force and okay. so that they are more stable. And then we'll add some grease or some oil afterwards. Okay. And you were saying you usually use a, a two-part glue to do this, but I mean this is a, a very common here, the cola, loca, the crazy glue. Yeah, the crazy glue, yeah, it's perfect. There is an activator for cola loca. Oh, okay. Spray mm -hmm. the activator on one side and then put the, the glue on the other side and when you mm -hmm. push them together, it activates instantly and it's okay. really quick and it's really easy to use. So yeah, I'm, I'm rotating it just to make sure that if there is a little bit of glue mm -hmm. that came out of the seams, I'm just gonna smear it around yeah. and then it's it not gonna move. be stuck. Now we have our block finally coming together into its final shape. It's also possible to paint the piece in a protective coating if needed. And then we're gonna get some Dyneema. So we're gonna get some Dyneema to make the soft shackle. The shackle yeah. goes through there. Yeah. And uh, we also have some rope. This is the rest of the thing uh, that I filmed before. Right. There was the, there was the motor. Yeah. And then, okay, so this exactly. is part of that? Okay. So I want to build a open source uh, desktop concrete printer. It's going to be a little bit different from the big uh, concrete printers that we already have on the market. Like the, the general concrete printers are like really big, really expensive, like 10, 20,000 or more uh, dollars and it's not open source, everything is very expensive about it and I think this is going to be the first uh, concrete 3D printer that's open source and really cheap to build. So this is, this is the first iteration of the mixer, so this is where uh, concrete goes. Mm -hmm. And then this part here, like this part here, when it moves around, this is going to be mixing concrete and the auger at the end is going to extrude concrete, mm -hmm. so this is the volumetric extrusion part. And this is just mixing the concrete so it stays fresh and doesn't uh, it and doesn't clog. Concrete printing project, I think it's less geared towards sailors, but it's more geared towards well, people who live in a house yeah. or people who want to build like a shed. You know, like they want to make their first furniture out mm -hmm. of concrete. I, I hope to be able to print uh, boats in the future, uh, floating houses, and these were printed just to make sure that the the print head works. And as you can see, there was some some concrete coming out, so that was a successful print. <laughs> I think I think the way it looks on my camera, they just look like turds. Yeah, and I think it's, fu it's funny, but I see. I yeah, this is the first is the first try. Right? It of looks course, like the, the concrete needs to dry faster so that it doesn't melt. Is that kind of like? Yeah, right. Some kind of accelerator and some some kind of uh, thickening agent is is needed. More of that is needed, but also. This was just extruding in one spot, yes. so everything remains very soft. But if, if you were to build something bigger, then it this cools. amount of this amount of uh, concrete gets uh, distributed on a big uh, surface. The thing about the pulleys is that they are extremely chewable. One here, one there. We have to put stainless steel rings here or, or circle bolts or whichever U things. Bolts. And then the ropes will cut across to each side and then there'll be other ones over here so that rope from that side will come to here and it goes to the pulley and it goes to here where it'll be attached to the tiller we're gonna have some crisscrossing ropes yes i think they need to be crossed i'm not i'm still not sure but i'm pretty sure uh with the aries wind vane when it comes to tiller steering the ropes need to be crisscrossed if it's i mean wheel steering they don't crisscross, but if it's still a steering, you have to cross the ropes over to steer, so.
We're on the rusted out wreck beside our boat. And we're looking for something else to eat. I spotted something yummy and sustainable in a crevice, then got out of Robbie's way. A venomous snack that's a little tricky to remove from the spear gun. I think these ones also, yeah. It's this one, these ones. And the top ones. The worst are the top ones. Start with the bottom ones. And it is the, the ten ones on top. There we go. How far down does the venom go? All, all the way down, technically the glands are, are here, but but uh, there's now less way of, to get poked. I get them all, there's a two pectoral fins, yeah. I think that I looks pretty spiky. This back here? Yeah. No, it's soft. Is that fine shit? Uh, no. It's a great fish. Lionfish, I would say it's very white and flaky. It's somewhere, somewhere between the grouper and the snapper. The problem is that they're not, they're not exclusively very big. And it's a lot of work and it's it's a lot of finger pain if you're not careful. <laughs> Micro fillet. Micro fillets. Nano surgery. Is there anything inside that can harm you? No. They're, they're not poisonous, they're venomous. And that means? That means you, when something is poisonous, it means that the actual flesh contains contains shit that makes you bad. When they're venomous, it means you have to get stung. Mm. 